Uh, this is from Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And nearly four years ago when I started this show, I gave out the first two digital codes that I ever gave out on this show, which was for Venom, number one and number two by Mike Costa and Geraldo Sandoval. And this storyline was pretty divisive, I think. I think there's fans out there that do not like this at all, the Lee Price uh, run. This collects the first six issues of the new Venom series. So after Space Night, after Flash Thompson, um, you know, lost you know, control of the symbiote, which we at this point didn't know how he lost control of it or lost it in general. That is something that they actually uh, write. The writer of Space Knight, when he ended the book, he just had it end with, you know, Andy and Flash and they were like back together on Earth and going out and fighting crime as a team again. And then this book started a couple months later uh, after that series ended. And it's like, you know, Venom is back. He's back on Earth. He's not a space knight anymore. He's not any of that stuff. And he's back to being a villain. How is he a villain? What's happening? What's going on? That's the mystery. You got to tune in. And uh, and at first, a lot of people were upset about that. And, and I myself was, this is when I was getting back into Venom. I missed all the space knight stuff. But when I heard there was a new Venom number one coming out and it was not him out in space, but back on Earth, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And I've read other Mike Costa stuff, like, you know, more indie stuff or like, you know, Transformers or, you know, G.I. Joe stuff um, or, you know, the things he did at IDW. I've read some of his stuff there, so I liked him. So he kind of roped me in to coming back to check out Venom. The storyline is essentially the symbiote has been separated from Flash. We don't know how yet because that is going to happen in volume two of this. They'll do a flashback story which we already covered, actually. I actually did it in chronological order. So if you watch my last episode of Space Night, at the very end, I talk about the eight-page story from Venom issue 150, which takes place right after this trade, in a flashback story to show you how the symbiote gets pulled away from Flash Thompson and how it ends up in an alley near a homeless man in this story. So that's pretty much, uh, that story has been told and we have already talked about it. So picking up from there, that's what's going on. We have Lee Price, who this guy, he's down on his luck. He's a former soldier, a ranger, and uh, has had a lot of combat training, has killed, has taken lives, um, and is back in the city. It seems like his past, his rent is past due. He's uh, struggling to find work, uh, even as a soldier, um, with a, like, you know, he has, like, PTSD, I guess. Like, they're kind of, he's part of the VA. He goes to the VA, he's trying to find work, and no one can really help him find work, it seems like. Um, and he's saying, like, you know, the government doesn't care about him now that he served his duty and now he's back but we're going to learn more about that i mean obviously like that does happen sometimes to soldiers unfortunately but uh but there's actually a reason for it in lee's case he he makes it seem like he's just a regular dude down on his luck but he's actually way more extreme than you know they lead on in the beginning um so when lee's looking for work he actually has to go to you know places that most people won't go to look for work uh where he goes to like um you know looks for criminal work and he finds Matt Gargan, uh, the Scorpion, you know. And Matt Gargan is now working for Black Cat, who at this point in the comics is kind of the new kingpin of crime. Uh, Black Cat went kind of supervillain for a while, and she took over some of the crime in New York, and she was hiring guys like Mac here, uh, you know, to work for her. And Mac is now looking, you know, they're trying to expand and do a, a trade or a deal with, like, another gang. They need some muscle. So Lee shows up and he's like, look, he's like, I don't know who you are. You seem like you're not all there. You're not listening or responding. So I, I don't know what happened to you in war, but if you're going to just go nuts and kill people, I, I can't, I know a psychopath when I see one, you know, it's like, I'm kind of one myself is, but I, we can't have you out there. He's like, so I need to know your head's in the game. And Lee's like, look, I'm desperate. I need work. I'll take this job. And so while he's buddying up with Matt Gargan to go do this, you know, deal to exchange weapons for money um, and on Tombstone's territory, no less, because obviously Black Cat is trying to ruffle feathers and let everyone know she's the new queen of New York of crime. Um, but while that's happening, the suit is weak in an alley and it's looking for a new host. And that's when it comes across this homeless man and it bonds with him. And it starts puking and it's like, okay, this isn't going to work. This host is weak and, and dying possibly. So I need to find someone new. And luckily that alley that it's in where it's, you know, uh, suffering, uh, the symbiote suffering, it's near where Lee Price is doing the gun deal. And so as it, you know, stumbles into that deal, when it's starting to go south, because um, Matt Gargan doesn't show up, you know, conveniently, but the deal goes south and some of, uh, I guess, Tombstone's men show up with guns to take everyone out and take the weapons for themselves and Lee is forced to go
go into killer mode or soldier mode and he fights and he starts taking people down but then he gets outnumbered and then the suit shows up right at that time almost like fate brought them together and bonds with lee and then in that moment lee gets all of the memory not all of them though like lee can't see who spider-man is he can't see Sp spider-man's true identity um and i don't think he can see flash or eddie's true identities either he just sees that the other versions of Venom. So it looks like the suit is either trying to withhold that information from Lee, um, or it's uh, still, you know, the Peter Parker stuff at least is still remnants from the, the Mephisto deal with Spider-Man. Um, so the suit still doesn't know Spider-Man's Peter Parker at this point, or has, you know, hasn't relearned that information. So Lee is now bonded and has become the new Venom. Venom. So I don't know, it's, this story is just, it's okay. Like the Lee thing was neat because here's what happens. All right, it bonds to a new guy big whoop who is this guy who cares the twist they added to this story is something that i i applaud to some level i like it a little bit they show that lee comes from a broken home his dad and his mom used to hit him and he had a best friend named firebug who was like a mutant uh or a kid who was turning in you know had developed his mutant powers and he had fire powers um so the reason that's brought up is because later uh lee will meet as an adult the new firebug and he'll be like you're not firebug the original firebug i knew as a kid and he's dead and he's like yeah i'm the new firebug and i'm here to take you down i was paid by criminals to come burn you to the ground but of course you know lee now has the symbiote but this is a different relationship for the symbiote normally the symbiote is the more dominant one in some cases certainly was with matt gargan um, and it has been in other cases sometimes there's a partnership sometimes there's dominance it goes back and forth this time you see us it's almost a, not a submissive suit uh, or symbiote but it's just it's not as strong and lee turns out when he joined the rangers they put him into really top secret black ops missions and they put stuff in his head to prevent him from ever get you know ever getting brainwashed or hypnotized by like a mutant with psychic powers or like a charles xavier or anything like that so because he has these, all these blocks in his head for anyone to actually get to his thoughts the suit doesn't have hardly any control over him, um, a very little control over his mind anyway. Um, so Lee is fighting back and Lee says, you know what? I've been killing my whole life, you know, so you see as the symbiote bonds with him, Lee's lying about his past. He actually killed his parents when he was younger and has been killing ever since. Even in war, when it looks like he saved someone and lost a couple fingers doing it, he, he actually killed that guy too. So he has this history of being like cold-blooded murderer like a, a little bit uh, sociopathic detached from humanity and uh just and not even bloodthirsty but just like has no remorse or feeling over it um just felt like the world handed them a you know a bad hand and he just hands bad hands back to the world when he can so what he's trying to do is he's trying to work his way up the criminal empire with black hat he's trying to you know work his way up in her favor so he brings her weapons back he's like hey the deal went down it, uh, it went bad tombstone guy showed up it looks like everyone was killed i'm the only one who survived but i have your guns and your stuff so i'm coming here to give it back to you hoping you'll give me a job so he's trying to work her way up or work his way up her criminal empire and be one of her new right hand people like matt gargan is and matt gargan doesn't like that and meanwhile there's a detective wombo and our federal agent wombo and a couple other agents that are tracking him down and like i said venom does get in a fight with a new firebug so there's a firefight which is it's actually pretty cool i like the artwork um, and then, like I said, there's federal agents that show up that get involved too. And you actually find out one of those agents works for, um, you know, Black Cat and there's, you know, using Lee to do things for them and Lee, you know, so there's like a lot of triple, uh, backstabbing going on and stuff. They got the agent working with, uh, one of the guys who works for Black Cat and they want to do their own thing. And then Matt Gargan wants to do his own thing. So at one point he actually gets his you know suit back he gets his scorpion suit and so you get a venom versus scorpion battle in this but it's you know lee price venom um but this story like i feel like visually some of the interesting stuff is like this the art i like this where it's like the two talking it's lee and the suit the suit will literally be sitting next to lee as like you know a kid on a bench um even and whether it's really there or not or if it's just something lee sees in his head you don't really know uh, because there are times when whole scenes are actually taking place in their psyche in the suit psyche and in lee's psyche and not actually in the real world and i actually like that they played with that because just from a setting standpoint like you know we always talk about oh these people are just going to sit and talk like how boring they're going to sit on a bench and talk like how boring but if the scene is constantly changing we find out that some they're not really in the real world or if you do something like this where the suit is 
the size of a kid sitting next to Lee. There's even times where the suit is like a devil and an angel on Lee's shoulder and they're talking back and forth. And it's just the suit trying to break free from Lee's control because Lee is bonded with the suit, but he can assert his dominance over it because the whatever part of the brain the suit goes to to tap into to kind of work with you or be you know symbiotic with you, it can't reach that part of Lee's brain or it has no you know uh, I guess hold over it. So Lee's able to get the suit to do what he wants until the suit starts messing with Lee and he goes into Lee's stomach. He's like, okay, I can't mess with your head. Fine. And right in front of Black Hat, the suit goes into Lee's stomach and makes him throw up in front of Black Hat, almost ruining his chances of working for her. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's it's uh, just pretty good. So there's, there's some of that odd couple fighting between them. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I, I still just didn't find Lee Price interesting. And here's that scene where there's the devil and angel on his shoulder. So the angel looks more innocent like a kid. The devil one looks more beastie like, you know, classic Venom and stuff. So I, I don't know. I just liked all the visual choices in this. Um, I thought that was really good and uh, and done really well. And it's not just Arado Sandoval that does the art. Um, there's also uh, Winan Ramirez and Iban Coelho, who, uh, you know, this is, again, some of my early introduction into Iban's work and why I became such a big fan, because he actually drew the entire fifth issue of this, which you got a Spider-Man fight in there, and then you also got the Scorpion in some new armor fighting against Lee Price Venom as well. And the suit is, like, really upset. It doesn't want to kill anymore. It's trying to be a hero. It really is fighting Lee on this. And Lee is just straight up ready to kill anybody who gets in his way, anyone. And so the suit is trying to stop Lee. And he's like, no, there's no reason to kill this person. There's no reason to kill that person. I've just been cleansed on Clintar on my home planet. You know, I found out our true nature, our symbi you know, the symbiote's true nature is to be more peaceful and to, and, you know, and because of a few bad hosts I've had or, or feelings I've had being separated from hosts like Spider-Man, I've been corrupted with anger and human emotions and all these things. But I'm cleansed now, and after being with Flash, I want to be a hero again. And I don't know why the suit's not looking for Flash. Uh, you know, I don't know why it just doesn't go back to him. Um, but uh, it somehow landed, you know, on Lee, and it's trying to escape Lee. But Lee won't let him go. The cool thing is Spider-Man does show up. They get into a battle. So pretty much all of issue five is Spider-Man versus Venom, with the Scorpion getting in the way a little bit. And then Lee also trying to be smarter with uh, his tactics. You know, it's too late for him now to actually team up with Black Cat. His identity has been revealed. He's been on, he's now seen on TV. People are filming him fighting the Scorpion and Spider-Man. And his face has been shown. So now there's no hiding it. Everyone knows that Lee's the new, you know, Venom. So the government decides to get involved and like, hey, that's a piece of our property. The the symbiote was part of us. Like, like we had the suit on Agent Venom, uh, Flash Thompson. So if Flash doesn't have it anymore, we need to go get our property back. So let's put together a symbiote strike force. And the agents are like, yeah, but our strike force, you know, it was a team of people. Claire Dixon, you know, they, uh, Man Wolf, you know, John Jameson, they all went to look for Carnage on that island, but that group has disbanded. We only have one member left. And they're like, who is it? Well, it's Eddie Brock. <laughs> Eddie Brock is still on the team. He's the only member of the team. And they're like, well, lucky for us, he has experience with this kind of stuff. So let's send him in to help Spider-Man take down the new Venom. And that's what happens. Actually, Venom is uh, fighting Spider-Man and Eddie Brock shows up with a helicopter and like an Apache helicopter and they're shooting missiles and they're getting involved. And then they end up letting uh, or helping Spider-Man come up with a plan. So actually you have Eddie here with Spider-Man and they they concoct a plan where Spider-Man says, look, I'm just going to tell the suit, hey, come back to me and let it bond with me. And then you spring in with your containment unit and trap it. And that's pretty much what happens. So Spider-Man fights Venom almost beats him but then when venom starts to come back to fight you know to fight back against spider-man spider-man's like all right this is my only option so he's like come get me suit and the suit leaves lee price and you know lee's like it's never going to leave you i have it tethered to me and the suit goes no no more there's been too many killings i've tried to prevent you from killing you won't let me i'm stronger than this i believe in myself the suit actually rises up again having i like when the suit has a personality when it has its own feelings and this was the probably the biggest strength I can give this book is, and Mike Cost I think did a good job on, which is even though I don't like Lee Price as a character too much, it I see the purpose of having someone that sociopathic and that cold blooded and to to a lot of extent and having the suit bond to him because it gives the suit you know a chance to rise up as its own character and choose its own fate. And so it does, and it says, look, if we can go be a hero again, if we can't make it back to Flash, Spider-Man's here, so he's the next best thing for now. 
So it leaves Lee and it has the strength to, you know, defeat Lee and get away. So I, I do like that. I, again, giving the symbiote something to do and making it more than just a tool being used by other people, it chooses to live. But then once it leaves, you know, Lee, that's when the sonic weapons come in and they actually take the suit down and then Spider-Man captures it and the suit says, I hate you. Like you, you literally offered me a new home, a chance to be a hero again. And then you did this. I hate you so much. So bringing that original hatred back and again, showing the corruption of the suit itself, because now it's bonded to Lee, you know, even though it was cleansed a while ago on Clintar, the suit is now starting to feel all those negative emotions again, uh, especially being with Lee. And even though it's trying to fight those urges and be its own thing and be a hero, then it gets double crossed by Spider-Man. So uh, you know, again, doesn't make Spider-Man look like a great guy, but this is the mission and they had to, you know, con conceal that. And obviously Peter doesn't want to be bonded to this thing again. So, which is funny because near the end of this run and something we just talked about recently uh, was Red Red uh, Red Goblin. And that's where the suit does bond with Peter again. And I'm like, well, you let it happen then, but I don't know, maybe that's how they built their trust back. So that's fine. If that's like an arc for this, that's fine. Um, but anyway, so Lee Price, he's now arrested. He's being taken into custody. And Eddie is going in saying like, hey, so, you know, I was told I can come see the suit. And they're like, no one gave that authorization. He goes, really? And he grabs the guy and choke holds him, doesn't kill him. He just knocks him out and then grabs the suit, webs the guy up. And they're like, oh, crap, Brock's missing. And so is the suit. You know, he, the Brock just stole the suit from the U.S. government. And boom, last page, we got Venom back. Eddie Brock, a.k.a. Venom. So, again, I think the whole purpose of this was this run here was just to get the suit back to Eddie. I wish they could have just started off a little bit cleaner with that and not really done the Lee Price thing. But Lee Price does come back later on to be a part of the story near the end in Venom, Inc. So we will talk about that again. That will involve Black Cat, you know, someone that, you know, Lee Price screwed over, uh, but this is when the Black Hat's starting to turn back to the good side. So there's a nice little arc going here. And overall, when we got to the end of Mike Costa's run, uh, which I did review the Nativity, which is like the last two issues, it made me really appreciate what Mike did on this run. So with that knowledge now of where this is ending, it's fun to go back and reread these because I see a lot of the, the seeds planted in these early issues. And that's what makes me give it a little bit more of a pass. I may not like Lee Price, but I still thought this story had some good stuff in it that helped uh, evolve the characters. Even though my biggest question is, why didn't the suit just go back to, to Flash? I mean, when it got separated from them, they were on the same rooftop together and then the suit fell. Couldn't have been that hard to find Flash again, but I don't know. So I guess we'll never get the answer to that, but at least it found its way to Eddie and the book ends with Eddie Brock as Venom again, which is great. So again, thank you so much. In the next episode, we are going to check out agony so make sure you're subscribed if you like these comic book discussions make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out and ring that notification bell so you get uh, alerted when i have a new episode go up so thank you so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you all in the future peace